President of the Overseas Press Club of America, and this building is our headquarters, the gathering place of the top foreign correspondents of our time who cover every corner of the globe in their search to bring the truth to you. From their personal files, we tell the stories behind the headlines, what you're about to see really happened, and the people portrayed really lived. Here is a story told by Eddie Gilmore of the Associated Press. Moscow, 1946. The shooting war was over, but while statesmen sat round peace tables, the first blasts of another kind of war, a cold war, were beginning to blow from the Kremlin, chilling the warm flush of Allied victory. I'd spent five years in Moscow during the war. I met and married Tamara there and our two daughters, Vicky and Susanna, were both born in Russia. They just had their first glimpse of America, and now, after three months, the Associated Press was sending me back. Why so sad? Aren't you happy to be getting back? We've been in America such a little time. Never mind. We'll go back to the States any time you say the word. It's not for myself I'm thinking. It's the children. I'll be happy wherever you are. We're not going to stay in Russia forever. No, honey. I got you out once, didn't I? Yes. And what are you worried about? I don't know. You don't know what it means to be a child in Soviet Russia. As we drove through Moscow from the airport, peace didn't seem to have made much difference. The buildings weren't quite so shabby, perhaps, and there were a lot more new cars, but the people in the streets still wore the same old discouraged look. We were on our way to our old apartment. We were looking forward to seeing our Russian maid, Lena, again. Good. Now put a picture over it. Make sure it is straight. The connection is all right? Good. There is another microphone hidden in that wall. You will report to me daily to police headquarters. Yes, comrade. Our uh, visitors will be here soon. But uh, do not be disarmed by their gifts and kindnesses. Be on your guard. They are very cunning, these Americans. You can rely on me. I know how to treat the enemies of our country. permanent watchdog. Well, here we are. Home sweet home. Hi, Lena, we're back. We're glad to see Lena again, won't you, Vicky? Good day, Gospodin. Good day, madam. Good day. Good day. Who are you? I am Natasha. I look after you. What's happened? I mean, where's Lena? I do not know. I unpack your luggage. It's on the way from the airport. Well, the old place hasn't changed much. I'll take the little one. Come, Drogaya. Mama, I don't like her.
had changed. Wartime friendliness had vanished overnight. The Kremlin had a chip on its shoulder about all foreign correspondence and didn't hesitate to show it. We had a warning from the embassy that our phone was probably tapped, that there might be microphones planted in our apartment. But however cold the wind blew, it didn't seem to affect the normal round of diplomatic parties. One of the many things still missing in Moscow is American jazz. So a few amateur musicians from the U.S. Embassy staff and I got together and we were in great demand at diplomatic functions. Now, ladies and gentlemen, by special request, we're going to give you some American jazz, played by Mr. Eddie Gilmore and his Kremlin Crows. What is the meaning of this, Mr. Gilmore? That? Well, that's supposed to be the Spassky Tower of the Kremlin and those black things of the crows, the Kremlin crows. I'm not sure you're showing proper respect for the Soviet government, Mr. Gilmore. That's supposed to be a joke, sir. Those crows make a lot of noise, too. No, Mr. Gilmore, you're showing disrespect. Well, did you get a load of that, sir? Better change the name of your band, Eddie. Can't be serious. Nothing like the sight of sleeping kids to restore your sense of values. Look what she's got stuck over the bed. She'll wake them up. Where'd she get those? I don't know. From school, I suppose. Did you tell her to paste them on the wall? Of course not. Well, then who did? Natasha, I expect after we've gone out. Interfering, old battle axe. Papa, what are you doing? Vicky, darling, who gave you those? The teacher at school. They're pretty, aren't they? I don't think so. Did she tell you to stick them up there? She said that Comrade Stalin was the greatest man in the world, and that he was going to stop the, the Anglo... the Anglo-American imperialists from killing and torturing the women and children in Korea. Oh, she did, did she? Anything else? She said that I was very lucky to be at a Soviet school, because in America, little girls like me were made to work in factories or sent down into the coal mines. Now, Vicky, darling, I want you to listen to me. Not now, it is. It's very late. She must get her sleep. But somebody's got to tell her. Not now, please. You can speak to her in the morning. Good night, darling. You sleep well now, otherwise you'll never get up in time for school tomorrow. All right, Mama. Good night, Papa. Good night, my pet. Feeding a kid that age all those poisonous lies. I forgot they might be listening in. You must be more careful, honey. I can't just sit here and let them warp her mind. But don't you understand? If you tell her the truth, she will only go back to school and tell her teacher you say she's a liar. Then they will arrest me and send you back to America. We got to change your school. Oh, honey, that is impossible. This is Russia. They won't let us. Then there's only one thing left to do. We've got to get out of this country. But what about your job? Some things are more important than a job, and our daughter's mind is one of them. I was wrong to bring you back here. No. It's the truth. I was crazy not to realize it. I guess I didn't like the idea of saying no to an important assignment. I guess no newspaper man does. But when it affects you and the kids, it's time I put my foot down. I'm going to apply at the foreign ministry tomorrow for a visa. First thing in the morning. The Soviet foreign ministry. Tomb of lost hopes and birthplace of the veto. For what reason do you request an exit visa for your wife and family, Mr. Gilmore? For reasons of health. If they are ill, it would be better for them to be treated here. We have the finest hospitals in the world in the Soviet Union. And you won't grant it? 
On the contrary. If you will produce a medical certificate, we will give it our consideration, Mr. Gilmore. They didn't refuse Tamara's visa. Like the old song, they didn't say yes and they didn't say no. They just stalled. I soon realized they had other plans. Tamara Gilmore? Yes, what do you want? I want you to come with me, please. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm waiting for my husband. So you have no time for your own people now. You prefer the capitalistic way of life so much I understand that you wish to leave Russia altogether. I only wish to be with my husband and my children. But you would not wish to harm him in his career. Of course not. Then I would advise you to come with me to police headquarters for a friendly little talk. What if I refuse? The MVD does not permit refusal. You know that. subway back from another visit to the embassy because it was quicker that way and I hated leaving Tamara alone in the apartment any longer than I had to. Anka? Anka? Where's Mrs. Gilmore? She went out. Do you know where she went? No, she did not say. Excuse I must go and fetch the little one from school. All right. What's the matter, Tonka? What's happened? The Amvede. They came for me and took me away. They told me, they told me I must divorce you. What? They did? What did you say? I told them they could do what they liked, but I would not leave my children and the men I love. You're not going to leave them. Not if I have to fight the whole Soviet Union single-handed and Uncle Joe as well. Again, I went to the embassy, but I didn't expect that they could do much for me as long as Stalin gave the orders. I've tried every trick in the bag. The manager of Associated Press has cabled Stalin. No, thanks. Even my mother in Alabama has written to him personally. Nothing, not even an acknowledgment. Well, where do I go from here? I'll do everything I can, Eddie. You know that. I'll take it up at the highest level. I'll go on bringing it up until they're sick and tired of the name of Gilmore. But frankly, as long as Stalin's alive and kicking, I don't promise you much. You know how it is just now. Accusations of germ warfare in Korea, anti-American propaganda going full blast. You couldn't have chosen a worse time. I wish Joe Stalin would nod his head. Keep right on wishing it, son. We spent the next weeks in a nightmare of suspense. The secret police had shown their hand. They were just biding their time to arrest Tamara and expel me on some trumped-up charge. Suddenly, we had no Russian friends. Even Tamara's family had to give up visiting us. They'd been told ours was a dangerous house. Our Father, which art in heaven. Hello, God again, darling. Our Father. Go on, which art? What's the matter? Who is our Father, Mama? Why, God, of course. That's not what Natasha says. She says Stalin's our Father. That's not true, Vicky. Stalin is not God. But he is, Mama. The teacher says so, too. 
I asked her. Vicky, darling, I want to talk to you. You believe Mommy and me, don't you? Yes, Papa. Well, even if Natasha or your teacher tells you something different, you must almost believe what we tell you. You must promise me, Vicky, always to do that. I promise. Cross my heart. All right. Now say your prayers the way Mommy taught you. Our Father, which art in heaven, hello be thy name. At last it happened. Stalin was dead. All Moscow attended his funeral. All Russia mourned. The rest of the world waited breathlessly to see what changes his death would bring, but not half as anxiously as we did. Was this the break we'd been waiting for? Things changed fast. Malenkov came to power. Beria was executed. But for us, nothing changed. The ambassador couldn't get any answers from the Kremlin on anything, let alone the matter of Tamara's visa. Gospodin Gilmore? Yeah, that's right. I am a member of the Azerbaijan Academy of Science. We are holding a meeting here in Moscow. You are? What's that got to do with me? I believe you know one of our delegates, Ivan Petrovich. Petrovich? I don't remember him. Yes, he remembers you very well. And your friend, Dr. Waldron of the embassy. There used to be a Doc Waldron at our embassy, but he's back in America now. So you remember him. Gospodin Gilmore, I'm sorry to tell you that your friend Ivan is very ill. That's too bad. There is only one thing that can save him. A special drug. I have the name of it here. I never heard of it before. What am I supposed to do? Get some from the American embassy. I will hand it on to Ivan. He's rich. He would pay you much money. Not for a million rubles, my friend. I have no authority to procure drugs for Ivan Petrovich or any other Soviet citizen. Then he will die. Why don't you go to our American embassy doctor yourself? Gospodin, you know it's not possible for a Soviet citizen. No one must know. I see. Incidentally, how come you got past our policeman friend outside? Only foreigners are allowed to enter this building. The police? Oh, I speak to him in Azerbaijanian. He thinks I'm a foreigner too. Very quick-witted of you. Hello, darling. You're just in time. You tell that to my wife, please. No, I think not. I go now. You think about it, Gospel Jean. I telephone you tomorrow. If you insist. But don't forget, our phone is tapped. I telephone you just the same. You know best, I suppose. Happy hunting, comrade. Goodbye. Who was it? What did he want? He asked me to get some drug from our embassy doctor for a sick friend of his. You refused? You bet. I never saw a more obvious MVD dick in my life. There's got to be an angle. I wonder what it is. Don't you see? You get him the drug. His friend dies and the Americans are accused of spreading germ warfare in Soviet Russia. Oh, honey, I'm so frightened. They're trying to make a charge so that they can get you deported and keep me and the children. Fat chance. We were getting pretty desperate. Whenever we heard of anyone getting out of the country, we asked them in for a farewell drink to try and find out how they'd done it. Pablo, I never saw him smile before. Uh, he is very happy because very soon he will be out of Russia. You're kidding. You mean to say they gave him a visa? They're slipping. Oh, you're kidding. That would be a miracle indeed, eh? <laughs> no, uh, there are other methods. Such as what? Uh, no, my friend. It's not for women and children. It's very dangerous. How's it done? Well, uh, 
Remember that the baggage of diplomats is not open at the customs. Eh? Therefore, you need two things, a specially constructed packing case, and also to know a certain greedy customs official who will add it to the diplomatic list, and uh, no one need be the wiser. Couldn't give me a blueprint, could you? Well, uh, I might. I wish to speak with security headquarters. We'd previously rented a dacha, a summer cottage in the country. This was the only place where we could be safe from Natasha's prying eyes, and we didn't have any time to waste. Try it. It's quite comfortable. Vicky, you'll sit here, and you'll have to hold Suzanne on your lap. How do we breathe, honey? You see these cross struts? Mm -hmm. They're hollow inside and open at the end. These holes lead into the struts, see? Oh. Very clever. You don't sound very confident. Oh, it's the children I'm worried about, honey. How am I going to keep them quiet? I'll have to get you some sleeping pills of some kind. Oh. I'm sorry. I wish there was some safer, simpler way to get you out. But there isn't. You know that, honey. If that Spanish guy, Pablo, could get away with it, why can't we? When we got a call from the ambassador, we were scared to death. We couldn't figure out why he'd sent for both of us unless he'd heard of our plan to get out of the country and was going to stop us. Sorry to keep you two waiting, but Molotov was unusually talkative this morning. It seems that our Argentine friends were caught trying to smuggle out some poor Spanish devil in their baggage. It was the end of him. Certainly glad none of our people were involved. Well, children, you're sprung. You and your family are free to leave Russia. Tomorrow gets a visa. Say that again. I said, tomorrow gets a visa. I just can't find words to thank you. Don't thank me. Thank the fact that they're all so busy at the Kremlin trying to knife each other in the back that they've lost sight of you. But if you'll take my tip, you'll pack your bags and get out before they realize what they've signed. You bet we will. What's the matter, Tonka? Didn't you hear? We're on our way. We're not out of Russia yet. We just arrived at the last stop between Moscow and Freedom, at an airfield just short of the Finnish border. Ten minutes, Tonka, and you can start uncrossing your fingers. Gospodin Edward Gilmore? Yes, what is it? You will come with us, please, to the security office. What's wrong? You will find out. All of you, please. Come on. We'll go for a little walk. Passport, please. Your wife is Russian? Yes. The children, they're born in Russia? Yes, but they're American citizens. The Soviet Union does not recognize expatriation. You own an automobile, D-375. Where is it? I don't have it with me on the plane, if that's what you mean. It is forbidden to leave the country without a bill of sale or other evidence of disposal. I've got it right here. All right, take these people back to the plane. finally landed in New York. There's not much I can say about that homecoming. You can't put feelings like that into words. It was Vicky who summed it all up. Papa, where are the policemen?